Hey, Marvin, let's get back to diabetes for a moment uh, before yes, we get into some other areas. Uh, what if you take also like cinnamon and uh, bitter melon and, you know, fenugreek and other Greek and other supplements like that? Does that help reduce your glucose? Yes, uh, there are studies out of India. Turmeric, cucumin, cinnamon uh, are quite active as antioxidants and uh, can also do uh, similar things uh, to other foods. Uh, we, we're studying them now in conjunction with mushrooms. We want to see if the combination of uh, turmeric with uh, uh, certain mushroom powders would increase the ability to control diabetes. And, and you know, Doctors will also tell you, watch what you eat. Don't eat a lot of uh, sugary foods, breads, pastas, starches. Stay off that. Why? Well, they, they, they have high fructose sugars in them. Uh-huh. And, uh, uh, you know, you have to look where they're made. Uh, not all of them are bad, but you don't want the high fructose sugars like are in sodas and in, in, in pop. Um, and sometimes they put them in, in, in pastas and breads. But quality foods are different. Well, I was going to say, like, fruits that have sugar in them because it's natural. Is that okay? Yes. All right. I say that without hesitation. I mean, sugar is part of the natural course of nature, uh, but it's when you have the high-processed fructose sugars that they're bad. All these people that are uh, either taking diabetes pills and drugs or injections, how many of them, realistically, percentage-wise, could get off all that if they had a better diet or ate the better nutritional foods? Well, uh, that's, that's an interesting question. Uh, the, the, the problem is that once you have a disease, uh, you know, now you have intervention. And what I've been preaching early on is prevention. Um, it was Hippocrates, the ancient physician in 450 BC, and all of us take a Hippocratic oath when we take our MD degree. Uh, he said, let medicine be thy food and food be thy medicine. And we've lost that ancient wisdom. I think that if we had better nutrition, we would prevent the disease and not have to use the chemicals to intervene. So when you say get people totally out of diabetes with the whole food, I think you have to start good nutrition early. But you can alleviate the disease. That means you can lower down the severity by increasing your nutrition. And it's like telling someone who has a potential of heart disease or has heart disease, you shouldn't walk. Well, you, you want to walk. Once you stabilize the disease, you'll prevent progression and worsening of the heart disease. So you need to exercise. And it's the same thing with nutrition. Are some diseases a process of what we eat, environmental hazards? Case in point, back to diabetes again. If from the get-go people ate properly, would they come down with diabetes anyway? Well, a certain percentage of people will come down with diabetes. I mean, what you have to do is, is hope that you're not part of it. You have other risk factors. There's probably, um, you know, a family history, but it's not proven that genetics is important in diabetes. But, but I think you have other risk factors besides nutrition. Uh, you have environmental factors like pollution. Uh, you have hormonal problems in water when they discard drugs, you know, right. into, into right. the water system. I mean, a lot of c- cities have bad water because uh, people discard drugs into the system and when they when they clean the water they're not taking these out so I don't think you're ever going to totally prevent disease what I think you can do is there's a war every day and you have positive and negative in your body going on there's the pro-oxidant state and the antioxidant state every day you cells die and every day your body creates cells. And I think the burden is on us that we have to create an environment in which we're producing more cells than cells are dying. And I think we can do that. And I'm on a mission. I think that uh, I'm going to live to be a long time, knock on wood. Because you want to prove a point here, don't you? Yes. Well, it's a personal point. I mean, it's a sure. selfish point for myself. But one of the reasons I'm happy to be on your program is that I want to convey what I believe personally to the rest of the world. I think the world can improve their nutrition. I think, for example, AIDS could be nutritionally related. Dr. Luc Montagnier, who got the Nobel Prize uh, for uh, showing the AIDS virus, said that nutrition can, can help with AIDS. That's interesting. That is. Well, well yeah. we're all exposed. Don't you think every day we're exposed to the AIDS virus? We have to think, why do some people get AIDS and other people don't? Well, let, let's, let, let's t- take out the, uh, you know, whether it's sexually transmitted or not, I guess. 
AIDS. You know, I've always wondered if you're with someone who has AIDS and they drink from the same glass you drank and you didn't know that, would you get it? You know, that's an interesting question. Well, let, let me say something personal here. I'm a, a surgeon. I, I do transurethral sections of prostates. I'm a urological surgeon. Okay. There's a lot of blood flowing around the operating room. Blood becomes aerosols. It dries. Good you point. don't think I'm breathing in blood when time. I do an operation? You and, and your, why, your staff they, and nurses. I'm sorry? You, your staff, nurses, everybody with you. Absolutely. You don't, you don't think the, the mask stops that from coming in. It can filter some things, but it can't filter a virus unless you have a special mask, which we don't use. Uh, I'm exposed because we don't always, we're not always allowed in the hospital to test people to see if they have you know, a positive AIDS test. So we're exposed all the time. Why don't we get AIDS? I think because we have a certain nutritional status that allows our immune system to fight this. And it's the same thing for everybody who's listening into this program. Every day you're exposed to viruses. You're on a plane. You think they clean the filter and the air conditioning? No, they want to save no, money. Well, if somebody injected you with the AIDS virus, you know, just gave you a shot, what are the odds of you coming down with it? Oh, I don't know if anyone's ever done that one. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's a tough that's, one. That's saying that's, if someone's pointing a gun at you and fires a bullet, can you dodge it? Exactly. Um, uh, that's a pretty severe one. I would say that you have a better chance. Uh, we did an experiment, or was done by a, a, a doctor, Aruoma, A-R-U-O-M-A, in London. I think it was at South Park Hospital in London. And he, we, the only close answer to this is that the, uh, we took the AIDS virus, or he took it with, it with a group of us, and he infected cells with it. And we found that uh, when you took ergothionine, which is made by mushrooms, we could stop 50% of the AIDS virus from duplicating in the cell. And that's the closest ethically that I can tell you that we've done that experiment. And it worked. And we inhibited with ergothionine, which is a substance I said earlier in mushrooms, we inhibited the duplication of the, of the AIDS in the cell by inhibiting enzymes that the virus needed to, to duplicate. And remember, virus has no enzyme system. A virus is a, is, is a gene. It's chromosomes that go into your cell and start duplicating by, by usurping or stealing your enzymes from your cell. So if you have good nutrition on board, you will stop the virus from duplicating, and you could do that in AIDS too. All right, I'm going to have you uh, sometime tonight go through an entire program for us to tell us what we should do, what we need to do. And, of course, there's more information on your website, which we've got linked up at coasttocoastam.com. Back for a moment. You said that, you know, sit out in the sun for about 20 minutes a day, increase your vitamin D. You know, yet we, we get other doctors, uh, Marvin, who tell us, you know, don't get skin cancer, stay away. What do we, what do we believe? Well, um, I've always believed what the dermatologists have said until recently. I mean, there was a study at Harvard Medical School. I mean, you're talking about one of the top medical schools in the United States, and that study showed that vitamin D levels are directly related to the severity of skin cancer. That means that the highest levels of vitamin D led to the lowest incidence of recurrent melanoma, skin cancer. Uh, okay. Well, that's just the opposite of what the dermatologists are telling us. Interesting. Yeah, no, you're right about that. And so, uh, you know, I think tanning salons might be good. You don't want to stay there forever, but I think we're, we're doing some studies uh, where we think we can develop certain mushroom products that can stop the UV from damaging you but allow the good stuff like vitamin D production to go on. And in fact, I'm writing a, 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 a small manual on this that I'd be happy to just, you know, distribute to your listeners if they so desire. Okay, now the tanning salons... Uh... Um, these are the ones where they sit in these beds. I've never done that. You know, there, there's that the self-spraying stuff, but that's not what you're talking about. You're talking about actually getting the uh, the UV rays from these well, tanning, tanning beds. Well, right? tanning beds use UV rays. So right. 20 minutes in a tanning bed will probably give you 10,000 international units of vitamin D, and that's your daily requirement. Okay. I'm not saying you should go every day. I think what you want to do is not expose beyond 20 minutes. If you take your shirt off and, and sit in the sun and you don't wear a hat, you'll get it within 20 to 30 minutes 10,000 international units of vitamin D. That's your daily requirement. Uh, but most of us don't do that, and especially people at night who are working at night and then they go home and sleep during the day, they're, they're really exposed. Those are the people who have to be really concerned 
uh, people who are driving trucks all night long, uh, people who work at, at jobs with an air traffic controller at night. Uh, he goes home and sleeps during the day. He's not getting vitamin D. So he, these are the people who really can benefit from taking vitamin D. When I, uh, when I get home later, I'm going to look at my vitamin list at the back. Um, I know how you said vitamin D is really not a vitamin, but is vitamin D in a, uh, you know, one of those regular multiple vitamins? Is it even back there? I can't yeah, it is remember there, that. but it, it, it's not. Uh, vitamin D and a multivitamin, they balance it out with calcium, so they're not going to give you enough vitamin D. So the problem is vitamin D and calcium make bone. They're very good together, but you, you, the one you're worried about is the high levels of calcium because vitamin D will use the calcium to make bone. So you want to have a normal level of, vi- of calcium in the multivitamin, but you need a higher level of vitamin D for your immune system and other functions in the body. And there's now receptors, we think, in prostate cancer that could be directly related to vitamin D levels. I got a couple messages from listeners uh, that the vitamin that you were mentioning, uh, a few want to ask, is it also called the Brazil mushroom? Is that the same thing, do you know? Uh, there, there is a mushroom in Brazil called the, the Brazil mushroom, but uh, vitamin D is, is in the Brazil mushroom, but we have not studied that. We, use, we think we can make more vitamin D with certain other mushrooms. Okay, all right. The, uh, the Chinese have had ancient wisdom for the beginning of time. How did they get so advanced in the beginning? I mean, they were experts on herbs and supplements way beyond other folks and other forms of medicine. Why them? Well, I, I think it was a, 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 a principle of evolution. Uh, they, they, were, uh, more, they were foraging at that time. They, they, they uh, used foods uh, as part of their uh, daily, daily uh, beliefs. Um, and if you look back at the ancient literature, uh, uh, they, 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 they thought food uh, was elevated to a higher status than we do. Uh, and I think that they paid more attention to food uh, thousands of years ago. And, and, and of course, it's based on a Darwinian principle. You know, you could see uh, who's living longer and who's doing better by what they eat. I mean, how come certain animals absorb, you know, avoid certain certain things in the environment because they, they find that their friends died? And probably the same thing in China. They were just more observant um, than we were. Well, that could be too. Inflammation. We've done a lot of programs on that. We believe turmeric helps uh, to reduce inflammation. I think you would agree that it is probably a cause of uh, uh, heart disease, stroke, and uh, and other problems and symptoms, huh? Absolutely. I mean, I think inflammation is the basic process of most diseases in the body. In fact, we think even chronic depression could be an inflammatory disease. Uh, inflammation is, is what we were talking about earlier, which is uh, free radicals or oxidative stress. So when you're exposed to pollutants, you're exposed to chemicals, uh, you develop free radicals in your body. And free radicals are what kill cells. And all of us have within ourselves hydrogen peroxide, which is a free radical. And so when your cell dies, it releases the hydrogen peroxide. And the whole idea is to protect yourself against that. And we think that heart disease is, is an inflammatory disorder. Diabetes is an inflammatory disorder. Uh, prostate cancer, an inflammatory disorder. Stroke, I can go on and on and on. And even Alzheimer's disease, as we spoke earlier, is an inflammatory disorder. And so we, we can change that. All right, we have whole foods that can actually neutralize inflammation. And um, as I mentioned earlier, um, I'm going to be creating a, a manual on uh, this and explaining this, uh, and if people want to, they can, they can get that manual. Yeah, I, I want to see that manual. I think that would be very beneficial for people, Mark. Um, with, and, and you're going to address just about everything we've been talking tonight uh, in depth? Yes, it's going to be a special report on oxidative stress and inflammation, and I'm going to address what they do not want you to know. I'm going to go into, say, the dermatologist and skin cancer. I'm going to go into inflammation and bowel disease. I'm going to go into inflammation and diabetes. And I'm going to, this book will be available in the next four days, and I, I can give you an 800 number where they can call, and we could send that book to them. May I 